Welcome back. Today we're making a really kind of classic Italian comfort food ragu. This ragu is served over a really creamy, delicious polenta, and we're gonna drizzle on top of that a really herbaceous kind of vinegary dressing to go along with it. This is based off of a dish I had like a few years ago, and I'm kind of always chasing that flavor profile of the vinegariness kind of cutting through the fattiness of the ragu and the creamy polenta. Ragu, bolognese, people kind of often use those words interchangeably. A bolognese is really made with ground meat. A ragu is made, you know, typically with these larger cuts of meat. So I'm using a combination of half a pound of pork and one and a half pounds of beef. Obviously, I can't make a ragu without angering a lot of Italians out there. So sit back, buckle up, enjoy the ride because we're gonna talk all about this stuff and I'm sure in the comments below, you're gonna let me know how wrong I am about all of it. So I can't wait for that. So the difference between like, you know, a ragu versus a bolognese as well is the size of the cut of the meat. In a lot of Northern Italian cuisine, like with the bolognese in particular, they will use the ground kind of meat and classic, you know, Southern ragu is more so with the larger cuts of meat. Oh, also, this is definitely not a dish from where? You got it, Sicily. Definitely not from Sicily. What we're gonna do is the base of this dish also is all of these vegetables. So I'm using carrot, celery, and onion, and I'm just gonna make basically a sofrito. I'm gonna put all of these in the food processor and blend them up until they're not super fine. We don't wanna make a paste. We want them like small though. And then they're gonna cook in there and kind of melt into the sauce as it cooks because this is not a fast recipe. This is not something that you make and eat within an hour. It's gonna cook up to like three hours. The best ones you're gonna get are gonna cook for like six hours even. And those vegetables are just kind of melt into the sauce and just be really delicious. I think it's, this is like a really nice wintry kind of comfort food. Like I'm, when I make this today, I'm gonna freeze it actually. And I have a, hopefully a ski trip planned with some friends and I'm gonna take this and you know, we'll have it when after we're done snowboarding all day. So it's gonna be kind of one of those awesome dishes that's perfect for that. I'm gonna pulse this up, get a nice finer consistency to these veggies. It's not a paste or anything, but very finely chopped. So the word ragu actually comes from the French. Ragu, R-A-G-O-U-T. And that is more of like a chunky vegetable dish. So as I said, Italians have, you know, their Northern style and their Southern style. We're doing kind of a combination of both. And this is, I'm gonna call it my style. This is my style ragu. Right now I'm just cutting up some pancetta. It's gonna add a nice kind of smokier flavor to this as well, which is really good. And we're just gonna finally dice it. You could use like a thicker cut bacon, but this is also, we're gonna render out the fat and it's gonna be really delicious in here. A dish like this, to have it with you when you're snowboarding or out doing like a winter sport. I'm very good at snowboarding, but I kind of stopped trying to do tricks, as the kids call it. I find that if I stop and have like a big meal, I get really tired and that's how I have, you know, I injure myself. For instance, years ago, I was with friends and we were snowboarding and we stopped for lunch and got, you know, a pitcher of beer and some stuffed mushrooms. And then we decided to go into the train park and try some jumps and everything. And so I went off the jump and I did not land it. And so I went to fall backwards and I put my elbow back and I could feel it. I was just like, boof. And my arm was sitting there. I sat up and it was just like flopping. And it turns out I broke, I snapped my arm in half, my humerus, this bone right here, which wasn't very humorous at all. It was the worst. So ever since then, I kind of have been a little bit afraid to do um, any big like tricks or crazy jumps or anything like that. So, all right, we're taking some garlic. We're just gonna thinly slice the garlic. You could mince this. I really like it just thinly sliced because I like having like a bigger chunk that kind of melts in your mouth. Now we can take it to the back and start cooking our ragu. To make our ragu, it's super simple. I'm gonna just season all of my meat really quickly with just some salt, and we're just gonna sear it. And not even all over, just like on one or two sides or whatever, um, to kind of lock in that flavor, whatever. And I'm saying whatever a lot, so. Sicily, just a couple tablespoons of oil, and we'll start searing off all of our meat. And we're working in batches while we sear it. We don't want to overcrowd the pan. We're not cooking the meat here all the way through. We're just getting color on it. If you were to overcrowd the pan, it would cool down the heat of it too much and you would kind of end up stewing your meat more than searing it. Beautiful sear, look at that. We're using um, pork shoulder 
and like beef stewing meat. So they're cheap, but they're also, because they're tough, they're gonna cook for a long time. And again, same as the reason why we're using bigger chunks. They're gonna retain their integrity a little bit more as they get cooked but they're gonna be tender at the end of it. So you don't need to get like an expensive cut of meat for this. You just want something cheap that's gonna stew well, um, cut into big chunks and let you know, the, the ragu do the rest. Okay, so our meat's all nicely browned, not completely browned all over, but first let's add the veggies because my pan is smoking. And you can see it gets a little brown on the bottom. The veggies, as it cooks, it like kind of scrapes up and releases all that meat flavor at the bottom. So don't clean your pan or anything like that. Just add the veggies right in there. We're just gonna cook our veggies down um, until they're nice and soft. I am gonna season my veggies a little. I know it seems funny that we're using big chunks of meat and then we're cutting the veggies up, but the veggies I kind of want to like melt into the sauce a bit more. Our veggies have cooked down a little bit, so we're gonna add the pancetta and we're gonna let the fat render out of this. I think it just adds like a nicer kind of element, another layer of, yeah. another layer into the flavor profile that we're looking for here. <laughs> our pancetta has kind of cooked down, the fat has rendered out of it. We're gonna add our garlic and cook that for like one or two minutes just to get the fragrance of it in there. And then we're gonna add tomato paste. It's just to help kind of bring out more of that tomato concentrate, that tomato flavor that we love. But if you have really amazing tomatoes or canned tomatoes, by all means, you could probably skip the tomato paste. We're gonna add in wine. Don't forget, pour a little extra for yourself. Sicily. Mm. That's another big difference between like a bolognese versus a ragu. Bolognese is traditionally made with white wine. You know, I love with this because it's such bigger chunks of meat to use a red wine, because I know I'm gonna be drinking red wine when I eat this. So red wine, white wine, whatever you feel like. Also, no wine if you don't want any wine at all, but Sicily, am I right? And we're gonna let it cook down and reduce a bit and get thicker. And then we're gonna add our meat back in. I'm adding beef broth just because, you know, we're cooking with beef. And I figure let's ump up that like beefy flavor with some beef broth. You could use water, you could use veggie sock, you could use chicken sock. Give her a stir. And next up, we're gonna add in our canned tomatoes. And I'm gonna crush these tomatoes as I put them in there just by hand here. This is like my favorite part. You guys know I love doing this. I think that whole peeled tomatoes are just nicer oftentimes than crushed tomatoes or diced tomatoes. You could also use a tomato puree if you wanted to, if you had that. We're gonna cover it, lower the heat to like maintain a simmer and just let it cook, let it do its thing for like three hours. It's gonna be pretty awesome. Ta-da! And now we wait, 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 wait for the ragu to cook. Okie dokie. Yep, I said okie dokie. Um, okay, so our ragu has been cooking for about two and a half hours or so now. We're gonna make our polenta and our herb dressing. You could eat this over um, pasta of some kind if you wanted. I'm gonna do polenta because I think the polenta is definitely an overlooked, um, an overlooked, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? It's an overlooked, uh, polenta just overlooked. <laughs> polenta is overlooked, okay? <laughs> and I think that it's, Really good, it's a really simple pantry staple. You don't need a lot to cook it. Polenta is also a dish from Northern Italy, so I think it ties in really nicely to have it with something like ragu. The main difference between a polenta and cornmeal versus grits, polenta is usually very coarse. You could cook it with just water or stock. I'm gonna do mine a little bit richer because this is the cooking show, you know, and I have to use some kind of cheese and dairy and, you know, milk in this product. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's move back to the stove and we'll get going on it. So we're gonna do three cups of milk in here and we're gonna bring it to like a boil with two cups of water, okay? I am using a little bit more milk than I am water just because I want it to be a little bit more creamy. You could do equal parts or you could just use water or just use milk. I think having a little bit of the water in there just helps, um, I don't know why, I don't know why, but I'm using a little bit of water, okay? And that's why I'm doing it. I need to justify myself to you. Why does this look like it's kind of, I think I was fogged <laughs> up a little bit. It's more clear. We're all clear now. Maybe I had to clean my screen. Sorry, gang. Our milk is coming up to a little bit of a boil. We're gonna add in our grits all at once. I'm gonna like sprinkle them in. I don't want them to like go in, in a big clump and stay like that. And then just start stirring. Because plant is a little bit more coarse, you can taste the individual grains. And we're waiting for those to get really tender. So it's gonna cook for about a half an hour. 
Make sure you're stirring it every like couple of minutes or so, and it will because it gets so thick, it tends to burn on the bottom. So make sure you're getting right in there, stirring right to the bottom. Once it starts boiling and it's simmering, turn it all the way down. Like turn it down to like low. It's like lava. It's gonna start popping at you and burning your skin and stuff. It's very dangerous, this whole, this whole thing. All right, we're gonna let that go do its thing. We're gonna come back and stir it every so often, but meanwhile, let's make our herb dressing, okay? A lot of food processors in today's video, huh? Food processors are the new Sicily. Now, this is, this might be the best part of this recipe. I know that we're having this like really beautiful, creamy polenta, and we're having this like very rich, long cooked ragu with like pork and beef and pancetta and tomatoes, and it's amazing. But this is 100% gonna be the best thing. We're taking all this beautiful basil. You can use a combination of parsley, you could add oregano in there. Just remove any big stems. The thing that makes this part of the recipe so good too is the vinegar. We're using red wine vinegar. So about a quarter cup of olive oil, a few tablespoons of red wine vinegar. We're gonna do like a teaspoon of salt and a little bit of chili flakes. You're gonna make it right before you're doing it. Literally, you're putting all these things into a little mini blender and just like pulsing it until it's nice and fine. There we go, look at that. So beautiful, so simple. Like, look at that, it took like two seconds. You're literally just like putting it, and yet, if you don't have a little food processor, you can cut everything by hand, that's totally fine. Finally chop this up or put it in a mortar and pestle, not a big deal at all. I think that it's just like my secret weapon I wanna put on everything. The polenta is basically done. Like, take a look at this. We're gonna add in the butter. Boop, boop, boop. And then I'm gonna add Parmesan cheese because like I said, this is the cooking show. Man, do we love cheese on this show, am I right? So we're gonna add in, look at that, all that cheese, boop. Um, you could add different kinds of cheese. You could add creme fraiche, mascarpone, sour cream. Now we're gonna taste it, see if we need to add any more salt. Don't forget, Parmesan cheese is very salty. Ooh. Mmm, more salt. Look how cheesy that is. I just added a little bit more milk because I want it to be a little bit thinner, but you be the judge. You can add a little bit more water if you want this even thinner. Here we go. This looks so good. So the big chunks of meat have stayed and we're gonna shred those chunks, okay? I'm just gonna take some tongs and a fork and kind of just like shred them a bit and it's just gonna get really nice, even thicker. Shredding the meat, shredding the slope. <laughs> we're just shredding. Just call me Shredder. Shred in. Let me give it another taste. Mmm. It's delicious. I'm gonna put some black pepper in it. Oh, it's so delicious. Okay, let's plate it. We're gonna start with our polenta on the bottom. But wait, there's more. You thought I wasn't gonna put more cheese on it? You guys are having a laugh. Is this the cooking show or is this the cooking show? Now, the secret weapon of this whole dish is this beautiful sauce. Look at this. We're gonna put this right on top. Just a little drizzle. A little goes a long way with this. And then we're gonna finish it with some more Parmesan cheese. This is just perfection. Ah, let me eat this thing. Mmm. The polenta is super creamy and cheesy and magical. The ragu, it's been cooking for hours and it's just, the, the meat is so tender, the vegetables, everything in it is just kind of like melting in your mouth. And then you have this beautiful, bright, herbaceous dressing that's vinegary and light and delicious and drizzled over the top of that. It just kind of cuts through this. It makes everything feel like it all belongs together. And this is pure comfort right here. For the recipe, click the link below.